Hey everybody, this is Troy Alexander. One more time, inspiration with Troy Alexander. We are excited tonight. We have an amazing guest, but before I get there, y'all know my motto, dream, take that step and walk with purpose into your destiny. Listen, stay connected with us on Facebook, Troy Alexander, Instagram. Y'all know I love to take pictures at Pick by Design. I got the thumbs up from the producer at Pick by Design. I'm telling you right now, YouTube, inspiration with Troy Alexander. Stay connected with us. And listen, I got an announcement. I, I said it on last week. Listen, y'all, we have launched a monthly virtual talent showcase. Yes, I said it. Every month, we are going to give opportunity. If you sing, dance, if you act, if you want to do a monologue, a poetry, whatever, if you play a violin, a ish, whatever gift you have, we want you to come on and be a part of our monthly talent showcase virtually through Zoom. Listen, we're excited. And every month, we are going to pick a different nonprofit to support. I'm excited, y'all, about that opportunity. Listen, come on. We want to lift you up and, 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 and encourage you and cheer you on and give you an opportunity to showcase your amazing talent. The first one is March 5th at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you want to be on this showcase, email me at m.troyalexander at yahoo.com or DM me on Facebook or Instagram but stay connected with us. We want to see your amazing talent. And listen, I got one more thing, one point of purpose. Listen, we all have been given such a power and that power is to believe. And I need everybody right now watching this broadcast, if you can just believe and hold on to your dream. I told you every week, don't give up on your dream. I'm telling you right now. And tonight we have an amazing young lady, her name is <laughs> Veronica Tulo. Listen, y'all, not only is she a film director, but she has written and directed four award-winning short film. Now, I don't know, it might be five or six by now because this was written <laughs> several weeks ago. But listen, she has several national, international pageant titles. She is the reigning Miss New Jersey, Miss America organization. She is attending Chapman's University's Dodge College of Film and Media Arts, first year student. Yeah, first year, y'all, listen, working on a documentary how girls and women can gain confidence through competition and scholarship pageants. Her film, Dear Hannah, was just selected to be featured at the Montreal Independent Film Festival. And guess what? I just saw also to that Dear Hannah and Not So Alone were both chosen for the Toronto International Women's Film Festival. Not only, I'm not done. Also, Dear Hannah was just accepted into the London in the short film festival of 24 frames for February. Listen, Veronica Tulo, thank you so much for being on our broadcast this evening. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. <laughs> Listen, I, I, I am in awe of you. I am so amazed at your amazing talent and gifts. Did you ever envision yourself at this place? I mean, because I'm, I'm telling you, all of your films are, are just, are just these awards and, and not, did you ever envision yourself at this place? Oh my goodness, no. <laughs> when I was younger and I kind of had that moment of, I wanna be a film director it was when I was walking down the streets of New York City and I, my mom and I happened to stumble across the set as they were taking it down from filming something. And I remember looking up and looking around at all the equipment and the lights and the cameras and thinking, oh my God, this is what I wanna do. And, I don't think that, you know, 12 year old me, 13 year old me would have thought that now I'm actually making films that are being <laughs> recognized internationally. So yes. it's, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> it's, it's, it's so amazing. What, what, what does it feel like to get that letter or to get that email and say, you know what, your film has been accepted. I, I, I can only imagine, but what does that feel like? It's really crazy. When you submit your film to these festivals, you're putting yourself at a limb. You're, you're showing, you're giving them something that you've spent months and months creating with you know, your hard work and your passion. 
and you're just hoping that they like it. <laughs> so to get an email back saying it's been selected, you know, it's 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 going to be featured at our film festival. It's just it really makes all of those hours and hours sitting in front of the computer Absolutely. editing all worth it. Absolutely. I got to ask you what what do you think that the judges see in your films? Because again, I mean, you are on let's listen. First of all, I don't know how many short films you've done thus far, but to have four award-winning and, and about to have five and six. I mean, what, what do you think the judges see in your films? Oh my goodness. When I make films, I just want people to be entertained. I want them to see something and, and just for that, you know, even if it's just 10 minutes to forget the world around them and to be so immersed that they're just, they're there with the characters in the story, experienced anything, everything along with these characters, feeling those emotions, feeling those events. And so I just, I just hope they're entertained. I hope anybody who watches my films are entertained. Well, listen, <laughs> I mean, I mean, they, they are amazing. And, and why short films? Why did you want to go that route? For me right now, short films is just about, it's, it's what's easy. <laughs> I, I've only really been legitimately studying film uh, for a semester. I've had maybe four classes that actually go into what, it, what you need to know in order to make a film. So for me, when it comes to short films, it's just because that's what I can make with what I have, with the materials, with the crew. Uh, but hopefully, hopefully in the future, I have a couple feature films written. I'll be able to <laughs> turn those into a reality. So that is, that's my goal right now is to uh, be able to get to the point where I can actually make those feature films. Wow. Wow. Well, how many short films have you, have you actually shown? Oh, uh, let's see. Um, I have The Hidden, which was my debut short film. I have Just Desserts, which was my college application film. Wow. And then I have the three most recent, uh, which is The Keys, Not So Alone, and Dear Hannah. So about five, five now. Now, 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 correct me if I'm wrong. So you have five films and four of them have won awards. All five have won awards. All five, listen, listen, yeah. y'all, listen, <laughs> all, listen, listen, I, all, all five of, of, her films have won awards. <laughs> I, listen, I, I'm, I, and before this show is over, probably a sixth and a seventh film <laughs> is going, I'm telling you, listen, your mother's gonna come on. Listen, another one came in. That is so, I mean, so, so everything that you've done has been acknowledged. Yes, I gotta sir. ask you, what, what, when you write the scripts, because you write the scripts, right? Mm -hmm. So, so what, what, what do you feel or, or, or what lets you know that, that this story needs to be told? Because there's, there's tons of, you know, right? Tons of themes, but, but, but what is it for you that says, you know what? Yes, this story needs to be told. What do you see? What do you feel? What do you hear? Give me the process. That's such a great question. When I write films, I'm very visual. So I can imagine the final product in my head as I'm writing the script. I can, I can see the shots, I can see the characters, I can see everything that's happening. Um, so for me, really knowing when a story needs to be told is that excitement that I get when I'm writing it. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't make, I can't wait to make this. I can't wait to see this final product and have it go from what's inside my head to being on a screen. And sometimes it is for fun. Some of the films I've written are a little darker, a little kookier, a little crazier, but some of them, um, like I mentioned a, a feature film that I'm writing that hopefully I'll be able to uh, direct or produce one day. It is very near and dear to me. It's inspired by real life experiences. It's inspired by one of my favorite films, which is Greta Gerwig's Lady Bird. And it's about a girl in her senior year of high school struggling with mental illnesses. And so that's a story that I want to tell because it's something that I've experienced and I feel like something that a lot of people have experienced. And it's a way to connect people together using this, this art of filmmaking. So it's really I, just that excitement that I get when I'm writing something of, oh my God, I can't wait <laughs> to make this. I can tell. I can see it in you. 
I, I can see the excitement, the, the, the passion, the joy that it brings. Now, now I definitely want to, there's so much in just what you said, but, but I want to take the first part and, 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 and how you talked about, you're able to see the story, the whole story. So, so let me just confirm. So are you able to see the ending in your, in your vision or, or does that evolve as you begin to write? It depends. Uh, and the first draft of the script, a lot of people write scripts very differently. I personally like to map it out as one would if they were writing a novel, you know, beginning, middle, end, character developments, character arc, stuff like that, um, which is very subject to change for different drafts. Um, but when I say I see it, I mean if I'm writing a line, uh, and I write, I write scripts very much like um, one would write a book. So okay. if I'm if I'm writing a line, there's a there's a line from this film that I, I really want to make. It's it's inspired by Edgar Allan Poe. It's inspired by um, these kind of gothic horror films and books. And it describes uh, a character sitting at their writing desk, writing in a diary as there's moonlight streaming through the curtains. And when I say I, I see it in my head, I mean I can envision the shot of the character on the one third line sitting at their desk, you know, furiously scribbling as the camera's pushing in and maybe there's a shadow of the moon across the desk. That's what I, that's what I mean wow. as I picture. I can imagine the shots and, and the, the image of what that will look like in my head. Wow, that is so amazing <laughs> because, because I'm always in awe when I watch films, I, I ask myself, does the director or does the screenwriter, like, do they envision like the angle of the shot, you know, whether it's coming from top down or from the bottom or they're looking at the, you know, the shoes and it, and it goes up to, the, you know, I, I'm just wondering, like, is that how you, so that's how your mind works. That's how my mind works. I think yes. every director and screenwriter is very different. It has their own style. And a lot of those shots do come out when the director and the cinematographer are talking about what shots they want to get when they're making storyboards, when they're actually drawing everything out. Um, but for me, that's that's what I see when I write. That's amazing. I, listen, I I'm I'm so in awe of that whole process of how you how you get to so so so. Do you write with a message, or do you just tell the story and 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 allow the audience to 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 take what they want from it? Or do you write intentional that I want them to get this? I think it's a bit of both for me. A lot of my films are, again, like I said, for entertainment purposes, you know, um, Not So Alone, I wrote because it was actually uh, Not So Alone, The Keys and Dear Hannah were all prompts for my class, for my visual storytelling class. <laughs> and I thought, why not just turn these into legitimate short films that I can send out to festivals. Wow. Um, yeah. <laughs> so for, for Not So Alone, it, the, the prompt was to make a short film where you introduce a character and then you give them a desire, a motive, a purpose, and then you have a, a moment of realization. And the way my teacher described that moment of realization is she gave the example in Legally Blonde when Elle Woods realizes that she doesn't need Warner, that she can be a lawyer on her own. And so I took, I had to take each of those three um, elements of a short film and then make something out of it. Wow, so, so, so how long does it take you to actually write a script, like a whole short film? I had three weeks to do that. <laughs> Really? So we had one week to write it, one week to shoot it, and then one week for uh, editing and post-production. Wow. Wow. Wow, Veronica. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. I mean, it's, it's uh, well, so, so, okay. So do you have any, any um, uh, concern or, or, or not fear, but any reservation now going forward? Because you've always been awarded. Like, you've always been recognized. <laughs> So like, do you have pressure now at all? Or, or do you just listen, this is what I do. And if they like it, they like it, if they don't. But, but do you have that in, in your mind at all? Like, do you feel any kind of pressure at all now? I think there's always gonna be that pressure of, am I, am I good enough? But for me, at least, I just like to make. Um, and it, it takes me back to this moment. I had the amazing uh, opportunity to meet 
these uh, internet personalities called the Try Guys. And I, I've been fans of them for a long time, but they did a book signing in New Jersey and they started out, a lot of them started out making videos for YouTube. And so I, I had the amazing opportunity to talk to them and I asked them, I, I said, I'm, I'm an aspiring film director. I want to make videos. Do you have any advice? And one thing they said to me that's always stuck with me is just make, make, make. It doesn't matter if it's good. It doesn't matter if it's bad because each of those you know, outcomes are going to give you something you can learn from and take into the future. And I love, I love just the idea of learning through creation. Love it. I love that. Oh my, <laughs> listen, and, and, and I love what you said earlier. You do short films because you do with what you have. Yes, and, and, absolutely. And, and this show is to inspire people. Listen, you don't have to wait right so you have everything from a to z take what you have and do the best with that and i love that about you i, I love how you just inspire and uplift and it's amazing now listen you just said that you know i see it i'm writing it i visualize it <laughs> but i saw a post veronica where you said that you were shooting the last scene but still didn't have a title yet now 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 how can you do a whole short film and not have a title yet and you're shooting the last scene titles are so important to me i think a title is really it's a first impression of a film it's what you see it's it's a lot of like a cover of a book you a lot of times will judge a film by its title of whether or not you want to see it whether or not it's for you so uh -huh. i always like titles to be very symbolic and just be the essence of my films so if you watch Not So Alone, if you watch Dear Hannah, if you watch The Keys, you'll understand exactly why. You know, by the end of the film, you will know the reason for the title. Oh, do you see why she's so amazing, everybody? <laughs> this, this is, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, just talk to her and you will be uplifted and inspired. I, I am so, do you have scripts already written that you haven't yet begun the film? Oh yeah, I've I've so many. There are so many scripts that will probably never become films. Wow. But I, I still write them because I still have the hope that maybe one day I'll I'll have the the experience or the crew or the actor connections that I need to be able to make it the best I can. Oh wow. Well I want to ask you, have you ever shot a short film where you're in the middle of a project and either you feel like, you know what? It didn't come out at the end, right? Already done, and you don't want to go. But but but, what do you do in those moments when when you feel like you know what you didn't really capture it like you thought you could? Because I would think that once like because once it's done, it's done, mm -hmm. right? But but how do you respond when you say you know what I should have done that, or I should or or do you just like you know what I'm resolved, I'm good, that's what I saw at the moment, and that's what it is. Yeah, I mean. It it's very difficult because as the director on set, you are the sole cr uh, creative, uh, in, in, like you ha are like the art of, of <laughs> yes. the, <to> the film. <laughs> right, Your right. vision is what the film is as the director. So a lot relies on the director. And uh, there's a, I forget who said it, but there's a saying where it's on set, there's a hundred, ways it can go wrong and only one way it can go right wow. so things are bound to go wrong especially uh -huh. in the last three films that i made um like you were saying you have to do what you can with what you have i made the film i was the only person on the crew i wrote it i produced it it was just me filming on set it was me and the actors and that was it I edited it. I had to deal with the, the equipment and I'm not a tech savvy person at all. Wow. So a, a lot went wrong, especially on Dear Hannah because Dear Hannah is uh, the longest film and, and most complicated film that I've made to date. And a lot went wrong. We had to reshoot entire scenes. It was supposed to only be two days of shooting and it ended up almost being five. Oh my goodness. So it's really about you know, doing what you can in your situation and knowing that not everything is going to go perfectly all the time. And if you get to the end and some things are wrong or some things aren't necessarily how you pictured it, it's just a matter of taking that and, and taking that kind of what you learned 
from what went wrong and then applying it onto your next project. Because once you once you've exported that the right. film, you're done. Right. It's hands off. There's nothing you can do. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> well, listen, I listen. You said all went wrong. Well, guess what? All went right because somebody <laughs> is is being moved by your amazing artistry, and I love that about you. And you're so confident. You're so sure of you. At least that's how you present to me. So sure. <laughs> and 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 have you always been this way? Oh my goodness. I don't know. I, maybe that's how I come across. I, <laughs> I'm very much an overthinker. I'm an overthinker and I'm a perfectionist. So I, I've had to kind of teach myself to and acknowledge my accomplishments. So when I, when I receive these selections and nice. shares my films, yes. I've had to kind of reteach myself to, to be proud of what I've done. And it's, it's something that, that I think has really helped me grow as a person. I think it's a lot of people, especially people my age, struggle with this. Um, the idea of not being able to acknowledge your accomplishments. And it's something that I always try and you know, spread the idea of is if you should be proud of yourself. You should be proud of the work you've done because you accomplished it. And that's a good enough reason to be, to be proud of yourself. Wow. So I making films has helped me so much as a person and helped me grow. And I'm, I'm, I'm just, I love it. <laughs> you see why she's amazing, everybody. So we, applaud her. I'm <laughs> telling you, I'm telling you, if you know her, please uh, get her autograph, take a picture <laughs> with her because um, she's already going to be, she's already amazing. And you know, her, her name is on the marquee. Listen, get, yes, get her signature now, but I love that about you and I love how you're so humble. And I love what you said, be proud of what you've done. That's, that's, that's so powerful, Veronica. And, and people watching this now and that will watch it later will say, wow, yeah, I, I, I should feel good about what I've done, you know, because I, I, I had the, 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 the will to do it. And, and how so many, right, have dreams, but, but, but don't take that step. But you said, you know what? I might not have a crew, right? I might not have someone to do this or someone, but I'm going to go ahead and do what I know I can do to the best of my ability. And I have to ask you, when you are completely finished with the film and ready to launch it, to, 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 what, what is that feeling like? What is that experience like? Like, like, like what lets you know that it's good to go? And, and, and I'm going to hit that button. Oh my goodness. I think it's really just having the, the, the faith to let go of, of something you've worked so hard on. And, <laughs> you know, there's always going to be those butterflies that fear that somebody's that's not going to like it or that's not going to get chosen, but it's really taking that leap of faith. Love that. I love that. <laughs> have you, have you, have you faced critics of your work? And, and, and if so, how did you deal with that? Yeah, sure. I mean, it, it, art is subjective. And so you're going to find people who don't understand something you're trying, a message trying to get across or who don't, you know, necessarily, I, I do a lot of horror. I really like horror and thriller. Yeah, There's yes. some people who don't like that genre at right. all. I've met some people who say, oh my gosh, I hate horror. And that's okay. You know, not everyone is going to like what you do. Exactly. And when it comes to critics, you know, it's really about knowing that you did the best you could with what you had and that you are proud of what you've done. I love that. And listen, y'all, not only, and, and, and this wasn't even in the bio that she sent me, right? I mean, but, but, but I saw Veronica in this amazing uh, uh, play, Mamma Mia. Listen, y'all. <laughs> Not, not, not only is she a film award-winning film director, she's an actress. Not only, but she's a singer. I mean, <laughs> phenomenal voice. And 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 it wasn't like you had this little old, like she had a major role. I mean, what was the part? The the uh, uh, Donna, the mother, and <laughs> yeah. Listen, and, and 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 so not only does she directs, writes, but she acts. She sings. So so tell me when when did you start? Broadway when or, or stage or 
I'm saying Broadway, right? But, but <laughs> when did you when did you start acting? A very young age. Um, my mom is is an opera singer. That's what she did. She toured Europe. She she sang classically. Uh, was trained classically, and so she was a huge inspiration to me when I was younger. I I wanted to learn how to sing like her. She's my voice coach now. Um, wow. My talent for the Miss New Jersey competition because I'm the the current Miss North Jersey. Um, wow. Yeah, and so it's, <laughs> I I sing classical. I it. sing uh, an aria from uh, Romeo and Juliet, a French opera, and she's she's my voice coach. <laughs> So she's Amazing. she's always been a huge inspiration to me with that, but it was really you know her who got me interested in theater and musical theater, and then the love just kind of grew from there. Wow, wow! I'm I'm trying to find out like when do you find time to to to, to write yeah. scripts, to act in plays, to just do all that you do, um, and now you're a first student in college. And, yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> So, so, so what was that moment like when you found out that you were accepted, oh my goodness, to, to, to this amazing college, amazing university? It was insane. I got the acceptance letter when my mom and I were in the car driving to Canada to visit a friend in Montreal. Wow. And I, I had put a, like all my eggs in one basket if I only applied to three or four schools. Um, two of them being uh, schools that I felt safer with, but weren't that passionate about. So it was really uh, a lot of pressure. And I was, I, I had been waitlisted for my other school. So really Chapman was my dream school. My, my like one, <laughs> as everything wrote on, was riding on that moment. And I wanted to get in so badly because I loved the, the collaborative environment and the passion from all the students in Chapman. And I got the email and I, I screamed. Yes. <laughs> and people started freaking out in the car and we had to like pull into a, a rest station to, to celebrate. It was wow. really amazing. And I, I'm i just so thankful that, that this is where I am. I've met so many amazing people that I can't wait to meet in real, you know, in person and make films with them. and. I just I love it so much. <laughs> so proud of you. We are so well, thank you so, so much. Proud of you, Veronica. I mean, more than words could ever say. So <laughs> proud of you. I got I got to ask you though. You know, there, there there's so much that goes involved in terms of your writing and mm -hmm. and directing and everything that you're doing. Um, I, it, it, where where do you see yourself? What what's your vision board like for for, for you now? Oh my goodness! For for like now for the present or for the future oh. oh my goodness for the present I just I really can't wait to get on my campus um you know of course when the the, the pandemic has has eased and and people yes, are yes. getting vaccines and then we're we're finally able to get life back to semi-normal at least yes 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 uh just really being able to meet the people that i've connected with so much online and being able to work with them and learn from them i mean these people if you think i have experience like some of these <laughs> other some of my friends are insane Wow. One of them is is starring in a, a Snapchat show. One of them is <laughs> in an Academy Award nominated film. They're being right. nominated for this right. and that and film festivals. I I'm the big their biggest fans. Wow. I, and I wow. just I want to learn from them. I want to wow. learn from my peers. I want to collaborate with them. I want to you know put me on set. Give me a a boom mic or in some wires. <laughs> I just want to be on set with uh, them. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. And where do you see yourself in the future? I mean, do you see yourself again? I know you talked about doing feature films and, 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 and so do you see yourself having your own studio? Do you see yourself being, being one of the, 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 the top directors in the country? Like, do you have those kind of um, aspirations or you just want to make good film? I think it's a bit of both. I'm a, oh. I'm a very ambitious person. I'm very, you know, uh, future driven. 
And so, you know, my, my dream future, if I could plan it out, I would love <laughs> to work for a production company like Warner Brothers Media or A24. I'm such huge, huge fans of them and the risks they take on their films. Wow. Um, even if it's not as a director, I just, I'd love to be on set and, and work and learn from them and from people in the industry. Uh, that being said, I also still want to continue making independent films as a director, as a producer and a writer, um, feature films preferably, but you know, we gotta, we gotta work our way up there. Right. We're at 12 minutes now. We gotta wow. kind of get up to like 96 at some point. <laughs> wow. And, um, I currently, I'm, I'm majoring in film production with an emphasis in directing, but I'm minoring in entrepreneurship and business because, you know, in, in, if yeah. in the future I want to open a production company, uh, it's definitely something that I would be interested in doing. I think that'd be so amazing to be able to inspire other people and give others opportunities. I see that. I see that. I see that in your horizon. I do, Veronica. Listen, whatever <laughs> you, so you <laughs> aspire to do, I have no doubt that you can get there because you are you. Now, I got to ask you, and, and everything I've seen about you has been about strength has been about the story has been about confidence has been about being humble and being purposed and that's what i so admire about you i want to ask you if if someone came up to you and said how did you become you what 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 characteristics would you need for me to become an example like you in the place that you've achieved thus far what would you say turning every experience into an opportunity to learn and better yourself. Uh, I think, especially, um, especially myself, I, you know, a lot of hard times have been experienced, especially um, middle school and high school. And I don't know if we're going to talk about it later, but I started a foundation yeah. called help educate at risk teens. And it, it raises awareness and provides education on mental health and suicide. And the reason I started that was because in middle school, my best friend was self-harming and was suicidal. And, you know, a, a, a hardship like that, having somebody so close to you going through such a difficult time, it, it really made me realize that this is an issue that needs to be discussed, that conversations need to happen. And I was able to take that difficult situation I was going through and that my friend was going through and turning it into a, a learning opportunity to better myself, to, ed to educate myself, to educate those around me and to really make a difference. So taking every experience you have and turning it into an opportunity to learn. Powerful. Thank you, Veronica. Thank you for sharing that. You're so welcome. Thanks. No, absolutely. We thank you. And 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 first of all, your friend is okay now. I hope. Still. Yes, thankfully. Yes, she was able Good. to get the help she needed. Good. Listen, we can just go go right into that because again, I think it was so powerful as you mentioned. Help educate at risk teens, incorporated, and and I love how that and it's a suicide prevention platform, right? Yes, and, and and it's so powerful that that you, you want to help others because now even to this day, I mean, I can only imagine again having to do virtually right from home. So much pressure, so much you know the environment has changed, and so we want to make sure that people who need help can get help. You know, Absolutely. And, and I love that. So so just share us even more about your platform and and again you talk about how it came about and your purpose. But I love your messaging about that because so many young people and just people in general, but especially youth, they need to hear that it's okay if you need help. Seek help. If Absolutely. You need help. So I'll Absolutely. give you the floor just, just to share more about that. Yeah. And uh, especially with, with the, the coronavirus happening and, and the isolation that a lot of middle schoolers, high schoolers, college students are going through, the, the awareness and education and emphasis on mental health is so important because oftentimes uh, these students can go through these, these times of, of negative uh, mental health mindsets and not even realize they're going through it. And oftentimes it can devolve into something 
even more negative or, or turn into a mental illness. And so for me, what my purpose is, is to educate my peers on what these negative mental mindsets are and how they can address it and how they can aid it before it becomes a mental illness like depression uh, and, you know, God forbid, suicide. Wow, listen, I, I have to say this is an, an amazing platform that you have because you are so, you have such a voice. You have <laughs> such an amazing platform and, and all that you've done to be able for people to hear you. And I love that about you. And I love that you're taking your time and your platform and giving it voice, right? Giving that mm -hmm. subject matter, giving mental health such a voice. Well, I thank you. We thank you so much <laughs> for continuing to do that. Listen, I, I, I have to ask you because again, you know, your platform has gone from, I mean, whatever you do, you seem to succeed at it, right? From <laughs> film to directing to acting. Listen, y'all, I saw her, she's doing like Shakespeare. I mean, this isn't like, you yeah. know, just something on the <laughs> You're doing these very in-depth, thought-provoking, um, um, emotional um, um, endeavors. And and so I, I gotta ask you like, like, like do, do you, what what do you want people to, to, to take from you when they engage with you, whether it's directing, whether it's acting, whether it's it's singing, what do you want to to for people to walk away saying, you know what, she is what? Oh my goodness. Um inspiring, I guess. There's there's a quote that I love. Um, and it's if your if your dreams don't scare you, they're not big enough. And it's a quote that I, I try and live every day by, uh, that, that idea of ambition, that idea of passion, the idea of drive. I, I would want other people to look at me and, and feel like they are inspired to, to have big dreams as well and to really go out and, and accomplish them. Awesome. Well, listen, not only everybody, I told you she's a film director, actress, she's in college, she's going... She's this award winning. She's Academy Award. Yeah, I said it. <laughs> Academy Award. I'm telling you, listen, get red carpet, get ready because we're going to be sitting on television. Sitting on, well, I'm going to be on the red carpet with my camera, just so you know, Veronica, just so you know. <laughs> but but, but y'all going to be sitting home watching, be like, that's Veronica. Too. Yes. So listen, we're getting ready, but we're getting ready. We're excited for you. But but I got to ask you, you you are doing a documentary. I, 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 I understand. My goodness. Which, which talks about the importance of, of, of confidence and, and how young girls and women through competition and scholarship, how they gain confidence. Why did you feel it was important to, 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 to tell that story? From my experience in the world of pageantry, I've noticed that there is a, there is a, a, a stigma and negative connotation surrounding pageantry. Um, many people I've talked to see it as a way for women to get on stage and just show off their exterior looks. And nice. that's, that's all they see. But when I do, when I compete in pageants, it's because it's given me the opportunity to have that confidence on stage to teach me how to be confident wow. and eloquent and give me this, this platform to talk about things I'm passionate about to promote my, my platform, my social impact initiative. And I want other people to see that as well, that pageantry is more than exterior beauty and uh, being on stage and sparkly dresses. And that's <laughs> right. about inspiring these, these wow. young girls wow. to be confident in who they are. Wow. And yeah, that's so amazing. I, yeah, I, I partnered with the system International United Miss, and I filmed uh, for a year, a year straight, a little over a year. I followed the girl who won the International United Miss New Jersey Teen title. Okay. Uh, I filmed the the state pageant. I interviewed all the contestants, and then I followed her throughout her reign as uh, IUM's Miss New Jersey what she did with her title, how she was able to promote her platform, what she was passionate about, the sisterhood that pageantry creates within these women. Yes. And then I filmed her competing at the international pageant. 
to show that pageantry is it's also a lot of hard work right. <laughs> a lot yeah. of hard work and a lot yes. of training and a lot of prepping and and talking with with interviewers and it's <laughs> it's a lot a lot goes into it yes it and does so showing that side well the, the the name of the the documentary is all that glitters the other side of pageantry again with the titles i think i think titles are so important I, and i think that title sums up what the documentary is about awesome awesome when is there a launch date <laughs> <laughs> we're we're working on it. We have all the footage. We're we're in the the editing stage, the post production stage. Okay. Um. So hopefully we'll have it uh, released sometime next year. Okay. Um. So has in on that because you know editing is is a lot, and we have many many hours of footage to go through. I'm sure. Um, but hopefully, hopefully soon it will come out. Oh well, tell me how how long now? How long will it take you approximately to edit that? that documentary because because I want people to understand the process right because mm -hmm. all they see is the end product right but 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 they yes. don't really know all that goes into it like are we talking months years because because mm -hmm. I've seen films that that have been actually filmed like years ago but it mm -hmm. takes so many years to actually come out into the theater how how long is your process or does your process take so um and I'm probably gonna get these numbers wrong but from what I remember, it's about one pay, uh, one minute of raw footage will take one uh, or to one to three hours to edit. So one minute of raw footage to one to three hours to edit. And from one uh, film, uh, especially a year long film, you could have hours of footage. Absolutely. So Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, editing is, is definitely a big en endeavor. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. Listen, everybody, we are talking about the, the reigning Miss North Jersey with the Miss America organization. Listen, I, I, and, and you've won numerous titles. I mean, you, you have just, um, and, and, and so what, what has pageantry given you? Oh my gosh. Pageantry. It's really given me the opportunity and the ability to speak my mind. Wow. I think wow. one of the most treasured things I've I've learned from pageantry is the ability to uh, eloquently converse with others. The the interview aspect of pageantry is so important in these scholarship pageants. There's so much emphasis put on them, and because of that, I have had to uh, work on my interview skills, practicing with questions and keeping up to date with current events. But really the ability to take my thoughts, to take what I want to say and to be able to say it and to have the ability and the vocabulary and to, to converse, you know, with anybody, with you, with friends, with uh, judges, anybody. It's just, it's something that's so important to me. And I feel like I will take with me for the rest of my life. What you just said, Veronica? has 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 empowered so many because you mm -hmm. said the ability to say it absolutely and, 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 and so many that are are watching you and that admire you are say you know what i have something to say but i don't know how to say it and 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 i love that you give them a hope and an example that yes your story matters you matter what you have to say matters and i love that about you and and so thank you again for continually to inspire others and giving them hope, giving them life. Listen, where, where did your heart come from in giving? Because not only, like, like we talked about your platform, but, but, but I mean, you've done cards to, to support the Children's Miracle Network Hospital. You, you've, you've done Sarah's Fight for Hope, the foundation for kids that were diagnosed with cancer. I mean, you've done so many things. Where, where do you think that your heart of giving has come from because it's a huge, amazing heart that you have. So, where do you think that came from? My my family. I was I grew up in a household where my my dad's a doctor, so he's he's giving to people every day the ability to live their best lives. Um, wow. My mom has always taught me and my brothers to to help others, to to be selfless and and 
humble and I'm so thankful by uh, that, that I've been raised by these two incredible people. That's amazing. Listen, I, and I, and I want to applaud them. We want to applaud your mom and dad. And, and again, that groundedness of your family, which is yes, yes, <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Your mom, listen, I'm, I'm going to get her on the show one day too, but, um, but, but just, but just amazing um, that, that, that you've, you've, and again, you're, you're only what, eight, your first year of college, so you're what age now? 19. 19. And, and, and there is no limit. There, there's, there's no, there's no boundaries for you to tell stories, right? To tell someone's story. And I love what you said about, I believe the young lady in terms of the mental health and, and wanting to share her story or that story because so many are going through it. How do you stay motivated? What, what, what keeps you excited about the next day or the next project as opposed to it feeling like work? What, what, what keeps you motivated and excited about what you're doing? I think it just stems from my love for it. I, wow. I love telling wow. these stories. I love making these films. When I'm on set, I feel the most alive. <laughs> and so it's really that, that love and that passion for what I do. It's, you know, that saying, if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. And I think that really relates to film for me. <laughs> wow, awesome, amazing. Is there anything about your journey that you would change? That you could get a do-over? Is there anything that you can, can think back? So you know what? If I had it over to do again, I would have done it this way. Do you have those moments or you're like, you know what? Listen, it happened. It is what it is. As you said, I'm going to learn from it. But, but, but do you have a moment where you're like, you know, I wish I would have done it that way? Sometimes. Uh, you know, when it comes to life and when it comes to film, you're always going to think about what you could have done, you know, what you should have done with all, all of the, the shoulda, coulda, woulda. But for me, I really like living, not necessarily in the present. I personally like living in the future. I like, I like having the actions that I take today better who I will be tomorrow. Um, and so for me, the past is something that's happened that you learn from and that you move on from. Wow. I, I think you should write a book because that was, <laughs> that was a quote for all time. <laughs> that was a quote for all Oh my goodness. You should write a book. You Funny really enough, be. I am writing a book. <laughs> So y'all, I didn't even know phone. that. Yes. yes. You should yes. be a mind yes. reader. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, I'm, tell I'm us. I'm currently in the process of writing uh, a book about mental health. It's it's a, a hand guide to aiding your mental health for middle school, high school, and college students. Oh, I love it, Veronica. <laughs> I love it. Wow. <laughs> uh, listen, listen, I, I'm... I'm Again, as I said before the show, I'm in awe of you. I, I'm a, a fan. I love to cheer you on. I love to applaud you because you are just that amazing. Um, and I'm just grateful, grateful that you took this time to come. <laughs> and then y'all, let alone, she's a lifeguard. You know, she, she, she's on, her, her, on the show with her mom doing cooking. I mean, she has all these other uh, skills. Listen, all, all I have to say is um, you're amazing. You, you are <laughs> well, just- Thank you so truly, much. Truly phenomenal. And um, I want to ask you, so like, 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 has, what, what has been your biggest challenge to date that you think that, that, that you've had to experience and overcome? And if you can think of something, how did you overcome that? Um, my biggest challenge, I would say um, when I was in, a, in high school, my first couple of years of high school, I transferred schools. So I, I, I transferred from um, the town that I live in school to a neighboring town. And the reason I did that was because the school that I went to was a very toxic environment for my mental health. I could feel myself deteriorating and I was a I was afraid to move schools. It was halfway through sophomore year. I didn't know anybody, but I knew that if I stayed where I was, I wouldn't be able to be the best person that I could be. And it was, it was a very scary experience. It was a very scary place to be in, that feeling of uncertainty. 
But thankfully, because of my family, because of the people around me, I had support and I was able to, you know, again, take that leap of faith and trust my gut and, and trust myself because I knew in my heart that I wasn't in the, the best place for myself to flourish as a person. And so I transferred schools halfway through sophomore year and it was one of the best decisions I made. So really for people, what people can take away from that story is, is trusting yourself. And because nobody, nobody knows you better than you. Well, listen, I mean, that is truly amazing. And, and, and for you to be able to recognize that is powerful. That's so, and, and then to have a family, right? Mm -hmm. To have a family to acknowledge your truth is Absolutely. so powerful because so many may not live in that environment, right? Where mm -hmm. they're like, no, just deal with it. You know, you're a yeah. young person, get over it, right? right. But, but thank goodness that your parents was able to, to recognize your truth and say, you know what? Yes, we're gonna, so, so again, I applaud them, but I applaud you for being honest with yourself. Mm -hmm. And again, so many young people, be honest with who you are. Absolutely. Will, I love it. I Absolutely. love it. Yes. And then, and I, I don't know if it's still in the works, but I saw a post where something about you're doing a podcast with that that's that's going to be <laughs> um inspiring uh filmmakers or those who want to go. Tell us about that. Yes, absolutely. So it's called a uh, New Wave Podcast. And it is through a production company that I work very closely with, New Cruise Films. It was started by uh, my uh, a high school film teacher of mine who ended up becoming uh, a mentor and a friend. And so he started it and he asked me to co-host it. And uh, it's the last Friday of every single month on the New Cruise YouTube channel where we invite uh, young or student filmmakers to share what it's like to be a student filmmaker, to share their experiences and to give them opportunities to promote themselves as upcoming artists. I love it, I love it. Well, we're gonna definitely be supportive of you in whatever way that we can. Again, we're so proud of you. I'm like, She's when does she find time? Oh my goodness. Oh but, my but, goodness. <laughs> but, but, but you give of yourself, you give of yourself. And I love that, that you give everything. Like, like in the moment, this is who I am. And, and so help me, um, help those who are watching now and that will watch this later, you know, say, well, you know what? I want to go into film, but I'm not sure the best way to go, how to start, you know, do I want to write? Do I want to direct? Because someone like, like, I don't know how to even begin to think about that process at, as to, or like even with the editing process, like that's a, 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 a career of itself, right? Doing just the, so, so <laughs> if someone says, well, how, how do I start, Veronica? I want to go into film. I, I, I love behind the scenes, but where do I start? What would you say? Start, make a film. There's, oh. a, there's, a, there's a saying that I love and it's you're only inspiring. You're only an inspiring filmmaker until you've made a film and then you're a filmmaker. Oh. So, you know, I started making films with my high school film club. Um, <laughs> they, they were weird and out there and crazy, but we made them. And some of them were made on phones, on iPhones. Wow, so wow. if you want to make a film, make it. Just, just make it. Doesn't have to be amazing. Doesn't have to be the next one upon a time in Hollywood. You don't have to be the next Steven Spielberg. Right. If you just, if you make a film, you are a filmmaker. Wow! Wow! <laughs> You heard it right here from the award-winning film director herself, <laughs> Veronica Tulo. Yes, amazing. Well, listen, you you really should go on tour and do motivational. You should really talk because you have so much to share. Do you ever think about documenting your journey thus far? Me? Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't thought about it before. Okay. Well, well, um, your, well, well, your story is so powerful. And I hope that one day that, that, that you can share that. Because again, what would have happened, right? If you hadn't changed schools? What would have happened if, if, if you never 
uh, recognize your truth and what you are feeling and, 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 and how the path that you've taken might have shifted so far differently than where you are now. So I hope that one day, whether it's a book, a film, um, something, but, but, but just to share really about you know, how you got through and how you're still getting through. Because I, I, I want to ask you really quick, and I know you want, but, but how, do, how do you maintain your balance now in terms of just, just being able to cope with so much that, that goes on? What helps you to just maintain your balance now? Oh my goodness. I wish I could tell you. I, I, That's okay. <laughs> my That's best okay. bet. I, you know, I just kind of do things and <laughs> it's, it's very difficult to find, to find time. I just enjoy keeping busy, which does lead to craziness very, very often. <laughs> um, but one thing that I love doing is just finding little hobbies to help blow off steam. Um, whether it's uh, painting or drawing or I recently I've been getting really into fitness and exercising so nice. just finding small things one thing oh. a day that you can just put everything else out of your mind and focus on that one thing is probably the only thing keeping me sane right now <laughs> wow wow to be honest with you. <laughs> well it's 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 wonderful and I want you to know I I, I won't get emotional but I want you to know that, that, that you are impacting so many people in this world. And, and I want you to keep going. I want you to stay motivated. I want you to stay encouraged, stay inspired because your story as you live it is being told. And not only that, but it's being read. People are watching you, people are being inspired by you. So I just want to encourage you just, just never give up. I know that you won't, but I just want to say it to you. Don't, don't ever give up. Know that you matter. Know that you're making a difference. And please keep telling stories so that people can know that they matter too. So thank you so, so much, Veronica. We so appreciate you and all that you do. Listen, where, where can people find you? Like, what are your social media handles? Where can people locate you? Where can they find you? Uh, so my Instagram is uh, Veronica Tulo, my name with the in front of it. So it's the Veronica Tulo. And my YouTube channel is Ronnie Tulo. So R-O-N-N-I-E Tulo. And as soon as the uh, festival season is over for this year, all of those films that I've been talking about are going to go right up on that channel. So if you want to watch them, that's where it is. Oh, wow. And, and thank you so much. This was such an amazing opportunity and I'm, I'm so grateful to be able to be on your show. Oh, we, we, it's the honor is ours. Thank you so much. But listen, I'm not gonna let you go just yet. Is there anything else that you want to share with us about you, about your journey um, at all? Because again, this, this show is all about inspiring people to follow their dreams. Is there anything that we didn't touch upon that you wanna share about you and about your journey thus far? Um, really just about how, you know, when it comes to filmmaking and when it comes to the arts and, and doing a, a, following a career that isn't always set in stone, there always is going to have that need for, for faith, that need for hope and, and that ability to push on. So for people who are are nervous to go into a, something like film where you're not necessarily guaranteed to be on every set and every production. You just have to put your heart into everything you do. That's what I do. And even if it doesn't get recognized, I can make a film where everybody who sees it could be like, mm, it's okay. But the fact that I, I put my heart into it, I worked hard on it and I'm proud of it. That's what matters. Thank you, Veronica. Again, thank you so much for being the amazing you. Thank you for, again, sharing your time, sharing your story, sharing your journey with us. Again, I'm so, so proud of you. And guess what? I know I'm going to have you back again because you are, because <laughs> I know there is more in your journey. There's more in your vision. There's more in your purpose. 
So I thank you. But, I'll, but before I go, I'm going to give you the last, last word. So any last word that you want to share with anyone again that might come and say, you know what? I don't know if I can take that step. I don't know. I have a dream, but I just don't know how to, what again, what would you again encourage them? I want to give you the platform and then I'll give the final word. What would you say to them? Go for it. You know, <laughs> it's really just a matter of, of those negative, those negative words those negative thoughts can cloud up your mind a lot, but to really push them aside and, and take that risk. Cause a lot of life is about taking risks and sometimes they're, you're not going to get the rewards you want, but sometimes you will. And those times you will is what makes it all worth it. Wow. And, you know, another thing that's not necessarily associated with film, but when it comes to mental health, one thing I always try and say is it's okay to not be okay. It's okay to have those negative feelings, those negative thoughts, especially in such a difficult time, like the one we're going through. And the most important thing is to talk about it. You know, there's so much taboo and stigma surrounding mental health. And a lot of people are afraid to talk about it, afraid to say, hey, I'm feeling a certain way. Just do it. It's, wow. it's, it's, again, like film with mental health, it all just comes back to taking that leap of faith, saying what's on your mind, going for something and, and not being afraid. Amazing, amazing. Well, listen, I want to ask you one last thing. Do you want to give any shout outs to anybody, I know your mom and dad, phenomenal, phenomenal they are, but any other shout outs you wanna to give to anyone else? <laughs> um, oh my goodness, uh, there's so many people. <laughs> um, uh, my, uh, my Miss North Jersey uh, program directors of the Northern Scholarship Pageant, Heather and Ann, they're so supportive of, of everything I'm doing, Of of my experience with the Miss America organization. I'm so thankful that they are the ones guiding me through it. <laughs> um, to uh, Cesar Cruz, who was having me co-host this podcast. He is a, an amazing mentor in film. And, um, you know, I learned so much from him. And then my, my family, my parents and my brothers, you know, everything I am is because of them. Well, thank you, everybody. Listen, this is Veronica Tulo. This is why she's amazing. And we applaud you. Thank you so much, Veronica, for sharing your story, your journey with us. We're so proud of you. And thank you. Thank you again. We're going to definitely have you back again because I know, the Oscars, I know the Oscars are coming. I know the, all of the wonderful acknowledgments of who you are will we'll be told and recognized because it already is. Because all of her films everybody, have won awards. And get ready. They're about to win some more. So thank you, Veronica, so much for sharing your journey, who you are. We're, uh, we're proud of you. We're so proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody, this is Inspiration with Troy Alexander. Thank you so much for joining us on this week. We are excited to come back every week. And you know my motto, dream, take that step, and walk with purpose into your destiny. Don't give up on your dream. Listen, you are worth your dream. Hold on to it and never give up. Thank you so much. Listen, we won't be on next week, but we're coming back. The beginning of uh, March, we're excited, but hold on to your dream. Thank you so much. Be encouraged. Thank you, Veronica. Have a great night, everybody. Thank you so much.